Number 10. Mask of the Bat God here is the Mask of the Bat God, an ancient jade mask that depicts a bat god from the old Zapotec culture that was recently found inside the insanely well-preserved pyramids at Monte Alban, in the state of Oaxaca in Mexico. The jade mask may look like a jaguar, but it really represents a bat. Keep in mind that the place where it was found, Monte Alban, was once the heart of the enormously powerful Zapotec civilization. Archaeologists and scholars disagree slightly as to what the purpose of the mask served when it was originally created between 100 BC and 200 AD, but everyone agrees it portrays a bat. The mask itself is crafted out of 25 different pieces of jade, one of the most highly valued stones in any Mesoamerican civilization. The mask also has yellow eyes made from the fragments of shells. Considering its age, the mask is in fantastic condition. The mask is currently on display at the National Museum of Anthropology, located in Mexico City. But what about the meaning behind the mask? Well, bats were very symbolic to the Zapotec civilization. Because the animal had wings, lived in caves, tombs, and even temples, the Zapotec associated them with the underworld. So they made a bat god the protector of the sacred world of the dead, ruling over their ancestors who roamed throughout the underworld. Number 9. Mummy with a Gold Tongue Something very strange has just been found in Egypt. A mummy has been discovered with a particularly bizarre artifact inside of his mouth. This mummy had a tongue of gold, and archaeologists just found it at an ancient site in Egypt called Taposiris Magna. The mummy lived about 2,000 years ago, and the Egyptian Antiquities Ministry recently claimed in a statement that they believed the embalmers placed the golden tongue into the mouth of the mummy after death to ensure that the deceased person would be able to speak properly once in the afterlife. The thing is, it was widely believed that when a person died, they met Osiris, the Egyptian god of the underworld. But if for whatever reason the person couldn't speak, they would be unable to talk to the god. Therefore, this mummy could have had a speech impediment or some kind of ailment that prevented them from talking. In order for the mute person to speak with Osiris in the underworld, he was given a golden tongue in death. This is one of the most bizarre artifacts ever found inside an actual mummy, as normally their organs are placed inside of jars. This guy must have been extremely wealthy for his family to stick a golden tongue in his mouth and bury him with it. Have you ever visited the pyramids of Egypt, or seen a sarcophagus or a mummy in real life? What was it like? Tell me about it in the comments below. Then remember to subscribe to Taltanic if you haven't already to get more awesome and intense videos just like this one. Number 8. King Tut's Camping Bed Everyone is familiar with King Tutankhamun, or King Tut for short. He was the infamous pharaoh who ruled Egypt over 3300 years ago. And one of the most interesting and recent discoveries related to this man is his camping bed. This artifact was originally found by a British archaeologist named Howard Carter when he entered the king's tomb back in 1922. The camping bed is a small artifact, a unique piece of furniture that was remarkably comfortable for its time. It had an elegant design and was crafted using sophisticated technology. And even though it was originally found in 1922, it wasn't until just recently that studies were done on this artifact to see what it was used for. According to the report from Live Science, the bed folded into a Z-shape using an ingenious mechanism. Basically, this thing was the original futon, and King Tut would have used it for taking naps wherever he wanted. The bed had hinges, the woven mat that the king laid on was insanely comfortable, and he probably took it with him on hunting trips. This isn't super surprising, considering King Tut is known to have suffered from malaria, and he had a club foot. This means he had to use a cane, and the camping bed was probably necessary when he went on long hunts or any other expedition where he could get exhausted very easily. Number 7. Fossils in the Petrified Forest A very cool fossil has recently been found in a petrified forest that dates back 220 million years. This fossil is a surprising new specimen that lived during the Triassic period. It was found in Petrified National Forest Park in 2019, 
and according to the paleontologist who discovered it, it's one of the rarest types of fossils ever found in the western United States. The paleontologist's name is Ben Klingman, and he found a tiny jaw fossil less than an inch, about two centimeters in length. How someone even finds such a tiny fossil is a mystery to me, but it's cool nonetheless. He named the fossil Katijidodon venitus, which translates from Greek as blue thunderstorm tooth. He named it after Thunderstorm Ridge, the area where he discovered the fossil. But what about the animal? Apparently, the tiny jaw fossil that was discovered once belonged to an animal about the size of a chipmunk, but far more ferocious than any chipmunk or squirrel you've ever seen. It's known as a cynodont, and paleontologists still aren't sure if the creatures had fur or not. These critters were small. They would have easily been mistaken for a rat or chipmunk or hamster. But the big difference is that they didn't have ears. Rather than ears, these weird animals had only holes in the sides of their skulls, just like reptiles do today. Of course, considering how small this creature was, it mainly feasted on prehistoric insects. Number 6. The Southern T-Rex Let's move to a slightly bigger archaeological discovery and several million years newer. I'm talking about a new Tyrannosaurus, closely related to the legendary Tyrannosaurus rex that was recently found in Alabama. This creature lived 77 million years ago in what is today the southern United States, primarily in Georgia and Alabama. It was found by three scientists, including David R. Schwimmer, a paleontologist from Columbus State University. Their new dinosaur is more primitive than any other Tyrannosaurus that lived at the same time. But other than that, not a lot is known about the dinosaur. The thing is that the fossils have been around since the 1980s, but nobody had a name or classification for the animal. It wasn't until recently when these three scientists got together that they figured out that they were looking at a new species, and named it the Appalachiosaurus montgomerensis, meaning the Appalachian lizard from Montgomery. In fact, the name of this new dinosaur has been recognized by the Journal of Vertebrate Paleontology. As a cousin of the T-Rex, this Alabama dino was smaller, it had a shorter snout, it boasted more primitive features, and it had a less developed brain. Basically, it was not as mentally sharp, and it was weaker, but it would turn into the ultimate king of the dinosaurs in the Cretaceous period. Number 5. The Six-Headed Chief one of the biggest archaeological mysteries going on right now is who is sitting in the tomb of the Six-Headed Chief. A bizarre grave was recently found in Scotland, holding some pretty interesting medieval remains. The reason the remains are so interesting is because they are surrounded by five heads. It's one skeleton in a grave with its skull circled by five others. DNA analysis has shown that the skulls belonged to members of the skeleton's family. Researchers now know that one of the skulls belonged to the man's son, one was his uncle, another was his nephew, and the others may have been his father and mother. This individual was buried sometime between the late 13th century and the early 15th century, and what's truly fascinating is that placing disembodied skulls inside of another person's grave was unheard of for that time in Scotland, at least according to an archaeological specialist working on the project. Back in the Neolithic and Bronze Age, body parts were mainly used for worship, but whatever is going on with this person is something altogether new. Harvesting the graves of parents and other family members is as unusual as it gets, and until scientists are able to figure out the identity of this six-headed chief, they are at a standstill. What we do know is that the man died from an extreme act of violence. After inspecting his skull, Researchers from the University of Bradford discovered that a brutal blow from a weapon had cut away part of his face. Why this happened, or who the man was fighting, is still a mystery. Number 4. Mysterious Underwater Monolith The next amazing archaeological discovery was found underwater. A Stonehenge-styled monolith has recently been found inside the Mediterranean Sea and it dates back over 9,000 years. This thing was discovered off the coast of Sicily, roughly 130 feet or 38 meters deep. It was definitely made by human hands, and the first estimates placed its weight at around 15 tons. 
The monolith has been broken into two parts, with each part made from local stone. According to archaeologists working on the project, the area in which the monolith was found flooded roughly 9,300 years ago, meaning the monolith had to have been built before this area was underwater. Here's why this discovery is so important and also mysterious. Researchers still don't know which civilization built it. Most of the prominent civilizations in the Mediterranean didn't rise to power for several thousand years after this monolith was constructed. But here's what else. These recent findings are proving that our primitive ancestors had more sophisticated technology than we previously thought. They may not have only been hunters and gatherers. They were also builders. They may have only constructed monoliths out of stone, but it's still pretty impressive. This is especially true when you remember that Stonehenge was built 5,000 years after this submerged structure. Number 3. Mona Lisa's Remains It's widely believed that a woman named Lisa Gherardini was the model for Leonardo da Vinci's masterpiece, the Mona Lisa. However, the mystery surrounding this woman is enormous. New archaeological evidence has emerged after researchers investigated the remains of several bodies found buried beneath the Sant'Orsola convent in the Italian city of Florence. The researchers are now saying that they have found the body of the world's most famous model. One of the bodies investigated dates back to the exact time that Lisa Gherardini died, leading them to believe that they finally found the wife of the Florentine silk merchant who passed away in 1542 at the age of 63. There are even records indicating that she was buried somewhere within this historic convent. This may not be super exciting to everyone, but if you're an art enthusiast, this is big news. This is as important to art historians as finding the tomb of Cleopatra is to Egyptologists. But, of course, not everything is perfect. There were only a few remains tested, with no skull found. This means that the face of the woman, who may be the model for the Mona Lisa, can't be digitally reconstructed using new reconstruction techniques. Researchers are confident, but as of yet, there is just not enough DNA to 100% verify that this is in fact the body of Lisa Gherardini. Number 2. Egyptian Hairstyles Hairstyles have changed over the years. Just take a look at the photographs of your parents in the 80s or 90s compared to the hairstyles of today. Hair is always changing, just like fashion. In fact, hairstyles have been changing for thousands of years. Thanks to the preservation of some Egyptian skeletons, we now have a pretty fascinating idea of what the old Egyptian hairstyles looked like. Researchers working inside of an ancient cemetery in the old Egyptian city of Amarna have recently discovered several individuals with different hairstyles still intact. One such woman was found buried with an elaborate hairstyle that used 70 different hair extensions, all attached to her scalp with different layers and different heights. She would have looked absolutely crazy when she was still alive. Plus, this woman had her hair dyed. Not only was her hair dyed, but it was dyed a bright orangish red color, which had been done using a plant called henna may. Basically, extensions and hair coloring are nothing new. The Egyptians were doing it way before people on TikTok. And according to the huge variety of hairstyles found in the Egyptian city of Amarna, the Egyptians were doing it way better. Number 1. Tomb of the Serpent Jaguar Priests The last archaeological discovery today is a big one. We're looking at the tomb of the Serpent Jaguar Priests, which were recently uncovered in Peru after being lost for 2,700 years. It was found in the Cajamarca region of Peru, containing the remains of two high-ranking priests from the ancient Pacopampa culture who existed before the Inca. Within the tombs were elaborate grave goods, including a necklace with gold beads, a black ceramic bottle shaped like a serpent with a jaguar head, and several colored pigments that had been dumped inside the tomb, including cinnabar and malachite. And while the meaning of the colored pigments is still a mystery, the truth of the priests is not. First of all, the priests had elongated craniums, meaning that they must have been elite members of the ancient society. The way their bodies were buried is also quite fascinating. 
They were both buried in the fetal position, with one priest facing north and the other priest facing south. They were buried near a large square courtyard that would have been used in public meetings and important ceremonies. It's believed that the priests may have been buried in such a way as to continue presiding over the important activities of the local people, even after death. Which of these archaeological discoveries amazed you the most? Number 10. The Truth Behind the Knights Templar The Knights Templar is one of the most misunderstood orders in all of history, and the truth behind this ancient organization is actually a lot more complicated than modern pop culture would lead you to believe. The Knights Templar were essentially monks that were sworn to harsh codes of poverty, obedience, abstinence, and hardcore fighting against the enemies of Christ. Before the Knights Templar came along, knights were often considered rascals. They looted villages, hurt innocent people, and were just generally jerks. But the Knights Templar changed all that by fighting in the Crusades and bringing much-needed order to wherever they went. But here's where the Knights Templar became controversial and way too powerful. They ended up being so wealthy that they became a problem for the ruling parties of Europe. They opened up a sort of banking system where pilgrims could deposit money at one temple church and pick up their cash at a different one. According to the History Channel, King Philip IV even went to war with the Knights Templar after they were driven out of the Middle East in the 1200s. And as a ridiculously powerful private organization, they eventually met a gruesome end in 1307, when French officials raided every single Templar house, arrested and tortured the Knights, and even burned these men at the stake before the Pope officially dissolved the order in 1312. And guess what happened when all the Templars were dead? Yep, the King of France and the King of England stole their money. And this is the truth about what happens when an independent force for good goes up against the monarchy. What do you think of the Knights Templar now? What did you think of them before? Do you have any theories of your own? Tell me about them in the comments below. Then remember to subscribe if you haven't already for more intense videos right here on Tall Tannic. Number 9. The Gospel of Satan the Gospel of Satan is not a book you will learn about in any history textbook. The historical significance of the Gospel of Satan and its suspected power has been dismissed and buried by the powers at large. The book is also known as the Grand Grimoire or the Red Dragon, and it was allegedly written in the 16th century by someone named Honorius of Thebes, who apparently claimed to have been possessed by the devil himself. The Gospel of Satan is currently believed to be the oldest and most powerful occult book ever penned, with instructions on how to summon demons and even the great and powerful Lucifer. So far as we know, the Grimoire was written in 1520 and was later discovered inside the Tomb of Solomon in 1750. Nobody knows exactly what is written in this forbidden text, but it's commonly believed that the Gospel of Satan is stashed inside the Vatican's secret archive, and that every copy that has ever been made has since been hunted down and destroyed. We don't know why, but that's apparently what happened. The only place where some form of this ancient grimoire may still exist is in the Caribbean, particularly in Haiti, where the book may still be in use by practitioners of voodoo. Number 8. The Roswell Crash The mysterious Roswell incident is one of the most forbidden pieces of history in our modern times. It all happened in July of 1947, just as the Cold War was coming into existence. At the time, the belief was that a flying saucer was discovered at a ranch near the small town of Roswell in New Mexico. The government, of course, denied this, and for the past 70 years it has been a huge source of speculation and controversy. But what exactly happened back in Roswell in 1947? Here's what we know for sure. A rancher named W.W. Brazil discovered a piece of wreckage on his property in Lincoln County. Prior to this discovery, there had been stories in the national press of flying saucers being spotted in the skies nearby. The army eventually went onto the rancher's property and took away the materials of whatever crashed, whether UFO or otherwise. The government then said that it had not been a UFO at all but simply a weather balloon that had crash-landed. But then again, they actually conceded in 1994 that the story of the weather balloon had been nonsense, 
and instead claimed that they had been testing a secret spy device. According to Roger Lanius, a historian from the Smithsonian National Air and Space Museum, the reports of bodies being taken from the crash site were actually just test dummies that had crashed along with the spy device. People like Roger claimed that the Roswell incident had nothing to do with aliens, but not everybody is so convinced. Number 7. Operation Popeye Believe it or not, the government tried to use the weather as a weapon and then swiftly buried their attempts in the back pages of history. The United States military actually tried to use rain as a weapon while fighting in Vietnam in the 1970s. A Pulitzer Prize winning reporter named Seymour Hersh actually wrote an article about it in 1972 in the New York Times, describing how the military tried to seed clouds in Asia to control the rainfall in a particular region. If somebody told you today that the government can literally control the weather, you would probably laugh at that person and call them a conspiracy lunatic. But the government was already doing it over 50 years ago. The government actually started experimenting with weather control in South Vietnam in 1963. What makes this even crazier is that, apparently, meteorological warfare is in no way prohibited by any international law. During the Vietnam War, meteorological warfare was used to make it rain along the Ho Chi Minh Trail, the trail used by the Viet Cong to move supplies and weapons where they needed to go. The United States actually managed to make this work with a secret program dubbed Operation Popeye. By somehow manipulating the clouds, the government made it rain, which muddied the Ho Chi Minh Trail and made it more difficult for the enemy to move weaponry and information. However, the program was not a huge success. The government didn't manage to catastrophically flood North Vietnam and neither did they manage to alter or change the landscape. But considering this was way back in the 1970s, and even today almost nobody knows that this ever happened, it's safe to say that weather manipulation science has never stopped. Number 6. Poisoned Alcohol During Prohibition, the United States poisoned alcohol on purpose to stop people from drinking. And while this may sound like a bonkers conspiracy theory, it's a real thing that happened and is documented in history and in countless records. It's pretty common knowledge that the government will do whatever they think is necessary to get their point across. And in the early 1900s, the point was to stop drinking. To help with the cause, the government ensured that toxic chemicals were included in lots of industrial alcohols, thereby preventing people from being able to drink them. But this turned out to be pretty deadly. Industrial alcohols during Prohibition were often turned into drinking alcohol for consumers by bootleggers who brewed their own stuff in the country and then sold crates of poisoned liquors to speakeasies and black market dealers. This resulted in people dying. As reported by USA Today, on New Year's Day of 1927, at least 41 individuals died in the Bellevue Hospital in New York from alcohol poisoning due to alcohol corrupted with things like industrial methanol. Number 5. The Anunnaki The Anunnaki are a group of mysterious deities who have all but been forgotten by history. These deities go all the way back to the mythological traditions of the ancient Assyrians, Babylonians, and even Sumerians. What's really incredible about the Anunnaki is that there's very little mention of them outside of these three very old cultures. However, there is some speculation that the Anunnaki were in fact a group of ancient astronauts that visited Earth during the rise of these old civilizations and taught them how to construct pyramids and other great monuments. There have even been books written about the subject, claiming the Anunnaki were advanced humanoids from the unknown planet of Nibiru, who arrived on Earth about 500,000 years ago and created a lesser life form by mixing their own DNA with the Homo erectus species, thereby creating humans. They did this to create a slave force of creatures to work for them. However, the Anunnaki were forced to leave after a great flood ruined their bases on Earth. Some believe they will return once again to enslave humanity. David Icke even believes that the Anunnaki are reptilian overlords who still rule the world from the shadows even today. Of course, none of these theories have ever been proved by science or archaeology. Mainstream scientists place the Anunnaki in the same category as the gods of ancient Greece or Rome. If there is truth to these theories, we won't know until they come back to Earth. Number 4. The Bilderberg Meeting 
The Bilderberg meeting is the most secretive gathering that is held annually on our planet. It began in 1954 as a way to apparently keep the United States and Europe up to date on global activities and to foster friendship. Ever since its original conception, the Bilderberg meeting has been considered highly controversial. This is because the guests are apparently not allowed to ever say what happened inside the meeting and many people believe that all the biggest global decisions are made during this little get-together. Everything from future war to global policies to media coverage to population manipulation is supposedly discussed at the Bilderberg meeting. Of course, in the modern age, it's very hard to hide anything. Because of this, the Bilderberg meeting has begun sharing information on its attendees. They're still not talking about what happens inside the meeting, but they are telling the public who is attending. But this doesn't make us feel any better. Considering that in 2019, the Bilderberg meeting included guests like Jared Kushner, the governor of the Bank of England, a former Google CEO, the NATO Secretary General, and the Microsoft CEO. Considering this meeting is filled with the top members of the biggest tech companies, as well as defense professionals from various governments, and even the heads from big banks, well, it's pretty clear that they're not just talking about pleasantries. Number three, the Forbidden City. The Forbidden City is an actual forbidden city and it has survived for 600 years. The Forbidden City still stands in the center of modern Beijing, and to this day it acts as the symbolic center of power for China. The Forbidden City has survived fire, war, and countless internal power struggles. It is the largest palace complex in the world, according to CNN, but it's separated from the rest of the city, you know, where the peasants live, by a giant moat. Although it's doubtful there are any sharks or alligators in the moat. Between the Ming and Qing dynasties, at least 24 emperors ruled over the Forbidden City. And even when the well-known Chairman Mao burned and destroyed many of the ancient Chinese cultural structures in Beijing to build factories, the Forbidden City remained unharmed. And don't worry, here is the forbidden part. The Forbidden City was completed in 1420 after nearly 20 years of intense labor and architectural design. The reason it became known as the Forbidden City is, of course, because it was off limits to the general public. This was a city of emperors and their kin and their protectors and their servants, not for the commoners of the kingdom. Number 2. Illuminati Truth the Illuminati are, without a doubt, the most notorious secret organization on the planet, and their forbidden history is steeped in speculation and misunderstanding. Prepare to have your socks blown off, because the Order of the Illuminati supposedly began life as a barbarian secret society in the late 1700s. Back then, it was a society where intellectual people could go to discuss their opposition to the elitist influence and religious doctrines imposed on their everyday life. But just like the Freemasons, the Order of the Illuminati became outlawed by the religious groups of the day and pushed into the shadows. And that is where the Illuminati stayed until the 1960s. The modern incarnation of the Illuminati came about during the counterculture crave of the 60s and 70s, when anarchists began making outlandish claims about a group known as the Illuminati who were controlling the world. The hard truth here, and very sorry to say it, is that there is no proof at all that the order of the Illuminati even exists, and definitely no proof that they're governed by reptilian overlords. Number 1. The Lost Civilization of Cahokia Cahokia was the largest and most advanced city in all of the southern United States before the arrival of Columbus, and also one of the most secretive civilizations that you'll never learn about in a textbook. Cahokia was once located in the south of Illinois, very close to present-day St. Louis. It was the biggest city north of Mexico, crafted by a group of local Native Americans who thrived all along the Mississippi River. The city was apparently sophisticated and cosmopolitan, and yet its history is unknown and even ignored. A lot of this has to do with the fact that people like to believe the Native Americans were nothing but a bunch of primitive savages, when of course, that is not true. The best proof to show just how advanced and culturally savvy the Native Americans were before their land was stolen and they were almost completely wiped out is Cahokia. It apparently drew people from all over the southern United States, like a giant business hub where trade allowed folks to prosper. 
But here's where history gets really strange. Cahokia began to decline after its population peaked in the year 1100. The population quickly shrank and then vanished off the face of the map by 1350. Scholars and historians have no idea what happened to this culture or where they went. The only evidence we have today of their existence is a collection of earth mounds that clearly reveal a once massive city stood very close to modern day St. Louis. What's your favorite branch of forbidden history? Let me know in the comments. Number 10. American Cream Draft Horse As the only draft breed native to the United States, the American Cream Draft Horse has roots that go back to the 1900s. It is instantly recognizable with its signature cream-colored coat that has become known as Champagne Gold. This breed is also known for having amber or hazel eyes and pink skin. They usually weigh around 1,800 pounds or 816 kilograms. They have a broad chest, short, strong back, and well-muscled hindquarters. They are a good choice for first-time draft horse owners. The breed is said to go back to a mare named Old Granny, who passed on her champagne genes to her offspring. Over the years, the number of creams grew, with the breed later recognized in the 1950s by the Iowa Department of Agriculture. This gave the breed the same status as any other of the draft breeds. But sadly, as machines replaced workhorses, the number of these horses declined, and these majestic creatures almost became extinct. In 1982, breeders attempted to revive the breed, but even today, their numbers are low. Number 9. Dutch Draft The Dutch Draft is a sturdy horse that is used for its size and strength, and is often used to pull heavy loads in the farming and logging industries. Originating in Holland, the Dutch Draft is similar to other horses bred in the country, where owners look for a large horse with a strong, solid build. Their ability to do hard work for long periods of time are due to their strong muscles, good feet, and easy movements. They are usually chestnut, bay or gray, and sometimes black. Closely resembling the Belgian draft horse, they were developed by breeding Zealand horses with the Belgian and Belgian Arden breeds. Owners value them most for their quiet disposition and unhurried movements, though they are also known to get very lively when needed. As the heaviest of all Dutch breeds, they work very well for prolonged heavy loads, making them a true workhorse for farmers. Number 8. Arabian the Arabian horse goes back thousands of years. Known as an elegant, spirited horse, they are an intelligent animal that can weigh from 800 to 1,000 pounds, or 362 to 454 kilograms. This horse is believed to have originated in the Arabian Peninsula. Desert Bedouin tribes trace their common history with the horses back to 3000 BC, with meticulous record keeping and ancestral records cataloging their pedigrees. The breed eventually spread throughout Europe and are known to have contributed to various European breeds, including the Orlov Trotter in Russia and the Pecheron in France. They were also later found in the United States by the 1700s. They were bred for their endurance and athleticism. They do well, even in harsh conditions, with their compact bodies giving them strength and balance and allow them to do well at almost every horse sport. The colors of this horse range from gray, chestnut, and black. They sometimes have white facial markings or socks, but you'll never find any dilutions, such as cremello or buckskin variations in the breed. With their long, arched necks and floating gaits, they offer a smooth ride and are renowned for their endurance. A beautiful breed that does well as a family horse, a show horse, in competitions, and as a workhorse. It is easy to see why the well-rounded Arabian is so well-loved. What's your favorite horse? Have you ever had one? Let us know in the comments below, and if you're new to the channel, welcome. Give this video a like and hit that subscribe button for more videos like these. Number 7. Belgian Draft Throughout the centuries, Belgian breeders were pressured to produce a lighter cavalry horse, but they stuck to their guns when it came to the Belgian draft horse. Breeders practiced selective breeding to keep the bloodline of the Belgian pure, which gave them a versatile, heavy draft horse that boasts exceptional power. These horses are shorter than most, but have heavy, muscled legs. Usually bay or coppery red, 
breeders in the U.S. bred the horses to have a white mane and tail and chestnut body with white socks. U.S. breeds are also taller and lighter than their heavier, thicker-bodied Belgian counterparts. Bred from large Flemish horses that carried armored knights into battle, the Belgian was in great demand across Europe and believed to be the foundation bloodline for other breeds of Clydesdale, Shire, and Suffolk breeds. Weighing up to 2,000 pounds, or 907 kilograms, they are strong and muscular. In fact, the world's tallest horse, named Big Jake, is a Belgian who weighs over 2,500 pounds. That's 1,134 kilograms. These are strong, working horses that can pull tremendous amounts of weight while also doing well in pulling competitions. The Belgian is a sturdy choice for horse lovers. Number 6. Pecheron a heavy draft horse that originated in the valleys of western France, the Percheron became renowned in the 17th century, bred as war horses that could carry fully armored knights. Existing since the Dark Ages, they're a cross between various breeds, including the Belgian draft and the Berber horses, a North African breed with great hardiness and stamina. Before World War II, many Percheron were imported into the US, but many were sent back to help with the war efforts. At one time, Percheron accounted for almost three quarters of all draft horses being used for farming, forestry, and transporting goods in the US. The Percheron breed is bigger than a Clydesdale. They are a sturdy breed with heavier muscled shoulders, forearms, and haunches. This is an alert and willing horse. They're intelligent and easy to keep happy and healthy. Today, they are used a lot in parades and festivals. You will often see them pulling tourist carriages or parade floats. The Percheron is known as both a war horse and a diligent workhorse. Throughout the centuries, Percheron have had their ups and downs, though. Through world wars, industrial revolutions, and the Great Depression, needs for the horse have waxed and waned. But even now, numbers of the breed continue to thrive. Number 5. Suffolk One of the four UK breeds of draft horses, the Suffolk horse is like many other draft horses, is used for agriculture and transport purposes. It's one of the oldest breeds of heavy horses in Great Britain, believed to have been around as early as the 16th century. Unlike other breeds, no color other than chestnut is allowed, but there have been seven different shades of chestnut to give them a distinct look. They usually have a big head with broad forehead and full bright eyes. Their bodies are broad and front, but graceful in back, with long and muscular shoulders. Although they are one of the smaller draft breed horses, they are both docile and powerful, weighing up to 2,000 pounds, or 907 kilograms. Among one of the most powerful breeds, Suffolk's was a favorite for ranch hands, using them to transport feed for the rest of the herd, cutting and raking hay in the summers, as well as packing and grooming cross-country ski trails in the winter months. Like other breeds, their numbers suffered as farmers took to heavy machinery to do their chores. As numbers started to dwindle, the Suffolk was increasingly rare, practically dying out by the 1950s. But in 1961, a group of Suffolk breeders took it upon themselves to revive the breed, and after importing more horses to the US, the breed's numbers started to make a comeback. Number 4. Clydesdale One of the most recognizable breeds, the Clydesdale is more than just the horse from the Budweiser ads. Large in stature, with trademark feathering on their legs and a high-stepping gait, this gentle breed is known for being easy to work with. They can live from 20 to 25 years and weigh anywhere from 1,600 to 2,400 pounds. That's 725 up to 1,089 kilograms. They were originally developed in the 18th and 19th centuries in Scotland and later brought to Canada and the U.S. and used, like many other large horses, to power machinery, plow fields, and pull wagons. They are well known for their strength and endurance. Although they are of Scottish origin, most of the Clydesdales are found in the United States. They are among the tallest of horse breeds, standing about 6 feet or 1.8 meters from the ground to the top of their shoulders. Originally bred for heavy work, they have also been crossbred with thoroughbreds to develop sport horses that are strong and level-headed. When they are used in events and parades, they have been known to easily carry two drums that weigh 200 pounds or 91 kilograms each, as well as their rider. Strong and agile, these calm horses have characteristically large hooves that weigh 5 pounds or 2.2 kilograms each. Their walking and trotting style gives the impression of a sense of pride, 
making these gentle giants a good family horse that will prance and play. Number 3. American Quarter Horse One of the earliest breeds of horses, the American Quarter Horse originated in the mid-1600s after breeders crossed native Spanish horses brought by the conquistadors to the U.S. with English horses that were imported to Virginia. By the late 17th century, they were already being raced over quarter-mile distances in Rhode Island and Virginia, which is where they garnered the name Quarter Horses. With thoroughbred blood, they were bred for performance, with the fastest Quarter Horse able to run 440 yards at 55 miles per hour. Quick and agile, they quickly became a favorite among cowboys during the era of the Wild West, when quarter horses were crossed with Mustangs and Native American horses. Often used to herd cattle, they are fast starters with excellent turning and stopping abilities. Most are solid colors and weigh up to 1,200 pounds, or 544 kilograms. They are still the most popular breed in the U.S., with nearly 3 million American quarter horses registered worldwide. There are two different body types in quarter horses, one that is stocky and compact, known for its agility and toned muscles, and another that is known as the hunter type, taller and less defined with characteristics that are similar to thoroughbreds. Both are strong and powerful and faster than most other breeds. Popular in both English equestrian events as well as Western speed events, the quarter horse is easily adaptable to a variety of sports, but it also does well as an all-around family horse. Number 2. Shire Horse The tall and strong Shire Horse is similar to the Clydesdale, but with massive hooves and feathering on their legs. Another breed that can weigh up to 2,400 pounds, 1,089 kilograms, they have long, arched necks and a Roman nose. They were brought to the U.S. in the mid-1800s, but didn't really catch on in popularity. Because of this, they were used to breed into smaller horse stocks. Known as the tallest horse breeds, they stand up to 6 feet 1.8 meters from the ground to their shoulders, but some records show they can get even taller than that. In the past, they were utilized to haul ale carts from breweries, to pull wagons on working farms, and to transport enormous coal wagons over rough roads. Usually black, brown, bay, or gray, UK breeding standards are slightly more choosy, not allowing chestnut colors or for their horses to have white markings. With its imposing height and extreme strength, some might shy away from owning a shire horse, but looks can be deceiving, because they are known for being quite friendly. They are easygoing and confident. With regular brushing and a sturdy ladder to reach all the high points on the horse's body, you can tend to this mellow, strong breed that is known to be both eager to please and to train. Number 1. Mustang Mustang's name means ownerless beast or stray horse. As the descendants of Spanish horses brought to the Americas by Spanish explorers in the 16th century, as the Spaniards introduced them to the states, both Native Americans and pioneers adopted the animals for transportation, marveling at their speed and stamina. With stocky legs, they were less prone to injury and were able to take long journeys without being hurt. They're medium-sized horses and usually weigh around 800 pounds, or 363 kilograms. They can be a variety of colors, with patches and spots. They are mostly found in grasslands of the western U.S. in Montana, Nevada, Idaho, and Arizona, to name a few, with some allowed to run free. Mustangs live in large herds that usually have one stallion, around eight females, and their young. Separate herds have been known to group together when they are in danger. They mostly spend their time grazing and playing together. There are about 25,000 Mustangs in the wild today, but about 100 years ago, there were around 2 million wild Mustangs roaming North America. With no natural predators and the ability to stay healthy on very little food, one can only hope that these wild animals continue to thrive and enjoy their freedom. Thanks for watching. What did you think of these powerful horses? Let me know in the comments below. Be sure to subscribe, and I'll see you next time. Bye.